In this video, I'm gonna share with you a lot of different things. I'm gonna talk about my trip to Colorado Springs to get some damage repaired. Then I'm gonna share with you some hikes I did in Colorado, specifically Salida and Leadville. Then I'm gonna talk about some tips, tricks, hacks, and some changes I've made after seven weeks of traveling full time. And finally, I'm gonna talk about my trip to Wyoming, my first trip to Wyoming, to go to the Adventure Van Expo. What is going on YouTube? Greetings from beautiful Wyoming. I actually just crossed the border. As I mentioned before, I'm heading to the Adventure Van Expo, which is also a Revel Rally. So that should be pretty cool. And I'll talk about that more later. Uh, but first I wanted to tell you about my trip to Colorado Springs. I did a little damage to the bottom of my rig, specifically um, the battery case that holds all my volt of batteries. Um, I like to take this rig to places I probably shouldn't go. So my plan in the future is to get a three inch lift to make it a little bit safer to do that. I went to a place called Trans West RV, recommended by Volta, and they did a really good job. They basically just made sure there was nothing wrong with my Volta, and there wasn't. And they just took a hammer and beat the box back in place, inserted a couple bolts, and sent me on my way. Right now I'm on the road. Some of you have mentioned that you'd like to see and hear more about my adventures in Colorado. So I figured I'd share that stuff with you. So when I was in Salida, Colorado, I had an amazing campsite on BLM land. But another awesome thing I did was I hiked a 14,000 foot summit in Colorado called Mount Chavano. So let me share that experience with you right now. All right, so it's early in the morning. We're at Mount Chavano. This is my friend Zena, who is training to hike to the top of Mount Whitney. This morning, we're going to hike 14,200 feet to the top of Mount Chavano. So it should be pretty cool. So I mentioned earlier that this peak is at 14,200. It starts around 8,000. We're currently at around 9,000. So we still have another 5,000 feet of elevation to go. So almost a mile in elevation. Uh, the hike is 10 miles. Um, there and back, so five miles. So yeah, we still got a ways to go and I'm already winded <laughs> and out of shape. So we're about halfway through the hike in, so a little bit over two miles. It's about five miles in. We're at a little bit over 10,000 feet, and we have to get to 14,000 feet, so we still got a lot of elevation to climb and a lot more miles to put in. So hopefully you can hear this, the wind is really whipping right now. And I know the GoPro mic doesn't go too well in the wind, but we had to make a quick pit stop, to put on sweaters and jackets, cause it's getting chilly up here, like really chilly. I mean, we're at the snow line now, so uh, it's getting cold. So the weather turned nasty pretty quick. So I had to put fall weather gear back on and switch to my phone because my GoPro is not working. So hopefully the footage is okay. Luckily for us, the storm only lasted about 10 minutes. The skies opened back up and we had great weather for the rest of the hike. All right, so we made it to the saddle as they call it. Um, a lot of people turn around here, they're happy getting up here, but we're not. We're gonna go to the top of the mountain. Half a mile left 
south. I hope you can hear me. Super windy up here. Uh, but we only have a half a mile left up to the top. I'm pretty much dying. We probably have a tenth of a mile left. Every time I do one of these, I say, I'm not going to do another one on the way up. But then you get to the top and it was all worth it. So hopefully I have that same feeling this time, but right now uh, I'm in agony. It's just, it's straight rock climb now. So we made it to the top of, of Mount Chavano. It's pretty cool because where we're camped, you can see it off in the distance. And to be able to climb it and say you summited it, it's just gonna bring like whole new joy to camping uh, with it as a backdrop. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Zena was a trooper. She basically carried me all the way up this thing. I was dying. So that was a pretty amazing freaking hike in Salida. I highly recommend you do it. I was exhausted. I didn't show much of the trip down, but I was hurting really, really bad. I was lucky I had Xena with me. She kept me motivated, <laughs> kept me moving. The entire round trip ended up taking us about nine hours. So I know that was a really long hike and some people just won't be up for that. So I figured I'd share another hike that's much shorter, but actually has an even better payoff at the end of the hike. If you've been following my Instagram, which is the same name as my YouTube channel, 30 to Wake Up, you'll know I was in Leadville, Colorado. I camped on some national forest land. I had amazing campsite there as well. Once again, my escaper friends came through for me and introduced me to an awesome hike. In today's video, I'm gonna hike Timber Lined Lake Trail with some of my escaper buddies. <laughs> like many hikes in Colorado, there is a chance that you'll run into a bear on the Timber Lined Lake Trail. So this trail is about a five mile hike. Um, there and back. So two and a half in, two and a half back. It's considered a moderate hike, but for me, anytime I'm above 8,000 feet, doesn't matter what I'm doing, just regular walking, I get winded. So same thing here. Uh, we're at over 10,000 feet. Even a moderate hike is going to be challenging for most people not used to this altitude. Lost track of the forest through the trees, forgot what I was chasing. Spent so many nights living out at sea that my heart is gone vacant. And everybody who was close to me all stayed on dry land. So now I'm driving back on in the state west. I just gotta feel something. Not gonna wait till the morning because something's gonna change my mind. I don't wanna change my mind. So I mentioned this hike wasn't very challenging. But one of the things you have to do to get to the lake is you have to cross a stream that's pretty deep. So you might want to bring some water shoes or something like that. So the reason this two and a half mile hike that ends up being five miles round trip is a moderate is because you got a, a lot of pretty steep hills uh, and elevation change so um but it's fun though it's uh there's streams everywhere i'm sure you can hear it now so you can stop and take a dip the water is ice cold so it'll definitely cool you down So I was talking about the hills earlier. Now it's almost probably, I'd say it's like a 70 degree incline. My friend Zena from my other hiking video says we're above 10,500. So anytime I get above 10,000, that's when it starts hitting me how challenging it is to hike at altitude.
All right, so we're all headed down, back down after jumping the lake. It's pretty awesome. Um, really cool hike. You should definitely come and do it. Uh, it's not too hard. Uh, it's a little strenuous on the way up. Like as you can see, I'm coming, going down kind of slow because it's like a 70 degree incline, but uh, not too bad. And the reward at the end is the beautiful lake. And so I can't recommend this trail enough to you. So if you're in Colorado, you're near Leadville, come and check out this hike. Okay, so those were some of my fun adventures in Colorado. If you enjoy that type of content and want me to include it in future videos, make sure you comment below and let me know. Right now, before I talk about my tips and tricks and hacks, I'm going to go try to find a spot to overnight here in southern Wyoming. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. The YouTube algorithm will show this video to more people, the more thumbs up and the more comments I have. So I appreciate you doing that. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Can you believe this freaking sight? I don't even know if you can see how pretty awesome it is. So I'm in Wyoming. I don't even know where I'm at. I got this uh, GPS coordinate um, from my friend Jenny. And man, she really did. <laughs> she really hooked me up. <laughs> Look at this behind me. <laughs> like. <laughs> that's gonna be my view <laughs> tonight tomorrow morning uh, it's pretty amazing I had a great night's sleep I woke up the next morning made some coffee enjoyed the view and then I hopped in my rig and headed towards northern Wyoming All right, so I just turned on to 372 West here in Wyoming. I'm on this road for about another 40 miles. So I figured it was a good time to share a little bit more of my RV life and some of my tips and tricks. One of the questions I get all the time is, how do I keep my rig clean? And it's a pretty easy answer. I keep it clean just like anybody keeps their house clean. But I have come up with one specific a van life hack uh, to keep my floors clean. So I figured I would share that with you. I wear a lot of merino wool, and so I have these lint rollers, but another use for them I found is cleaning my floors. Um, I have this big mat in here, but it would work on just a regular floor too. But so much stuff comes up so easily, and it just makes cleaning my van really quickly before departure really easy. I can get up everything that got on my floor um, from me coming in and out of the van at a campsite, things like that. So uh, yeah, so this is a cool little hack, as you can see, picked up a lot of dirt and stuff. So uh, pretty awesome hack. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that tip. It's worked well for me. Um, and I always have lint rollers because I wear so much merino wool, as I mentioned before. Um, another hack or tip or trick has to do with rodents. So. One thing that I wasn't aware of, when you're traveling and you're camping on all this BLM land out in the wilderness, there are a lot of mice out there and they'll try to get into your rig. It's a nice warm place for them to settle in and set up a nest. So I did a little research. I talked to some other van lifers that have been doing this for a long time and they clued me in on peppermint oil. So I figured I'd share that little tip and trick and hack with you. When I get to a campsite, I spray peppermint oil around my vehicle. That's supposed to keep away critters that'll chew on your wires and bugs. Um, I haven't had any of that. So far, it's worked for me, I think. <laughs> so we'll see. I usually spray up in the wheel wells here and then around and anywhere that these little guys could jump in. All right, so the next question I get is about my laundry and how I keep my clothes clean. So I'll share with you how I clean my clothes on the road really quick. 
So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of Moreno wool. I traveled the world with one backpack, and what made that possible was I wear Moreno wool clothes. Moreno wool's claim to fame and why it's so popular with travelers is you can wear it multiple times without having to wash it. And when you do wash it, it's really simple. You just get some soap and you throw it in a sink or a bucket like I have here, and you just let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes, and then you hang dry it, you're good to go for another five to 10 wears. So right now I'm gonna show you how I do that in an RV. I have this collapsible bucket here, which is awesome. I can collapse it down to nothing and store it. I also store extra water in these five liter tanks. And one of the things I use this water for is washing my clothes. That way I don't use all my water out of my fresh water tank. I'm gonna fill this up with a little bit of water. I've already kind of started. And this is the special Moreno wash I was talking about. Uh, it's by Granger's. So I usually just use about a cap full of it and you're good to go. And now we'll just throw everything in here. So that's it. Uh, now I just leave it here for 10 minutes. And while I'm waiting, I'm gonna go over here and set up a clothesline. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. The YouTube algorithm will show this video to more people, the more thumbs up and the more comments I have. So I appreciate you doing that. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. All right, so I hope you're finding these useful. Uh, my last tip trick hack isn't really a tip trick or hack. Um, it has to do with black tank dumping. And I figured I'd share that with you so you have an update on how I'm dumping my black tank now. All right, so I'm about to do a black tank dump. And the reason I'm showing you another one of these is because in my last video called my first 48 hours where I did my first black tank dump, I've changed a lot of things. I learned some lessons like I'm wearing these disposable gloves instead of reusable gloves. I also got rid of the aftermarket hose I bought. Um, that's one big piece of advice is don't buy anything until you use your own equipment. If you remember, I had all of that stuff stored in the back of my van. It was taking up a huge storage space and I have a perfectly good one that comes with the van and it stores right here. So that's why I'm going to show you this today. It is much shorter than my other one, so I have to be a lot closer, but that's okay. That's something I can deal with to save the storage space. So I'm parked really close here and just shove it down there. And now we'll empty the tank. So black water tank first. I'm not going to do a black water tank flush today. I only do number one in my toilet. I don't do number two. So I don't need to flush my tank as often as someone that goes number two in their toilet. That's just a personal choice. That's something I'm choosing to do. The system in here is perfectly set up for one and two. I just like the ease of tank dump when you just do number one in your tank. Okay, that's done. So let's empty the gray water tank. It's not a whole lot of gray water to empty to be completely honest with you. I try to limit the amount of water that goes into my gray water tank. So that's how I dump my black tank now. I really love how easy it is to store this hose in the side of my rig. I won't be going back to the other. All right, so those are some of the tips, tricks, hacks, and changes I've made since hitting the road about six to seven weeks ago. It's been an amazing experience, but right now I'm gonna concentrate on driving and getting to the van expo. Okay, so I just left Jackson Hole, which is a really cool place, and I wanna spend more time there, but I'm on a hurry to get to this Adventure Van Expo. Uh, the reason I cut in here is because I just saw a sign that says, be alert, there are moose on the road. Speaking of moose, here's a quick question maybe you can answer. So the plural of goose is geese. Obviously, the plural of moose is not meese, although it probably should be. Um, what is the actual plural of moose? Is it, I've seen five moose? Or is it, I've seen five mooses? So if you know the answer to that, please type below. I have no clue. I personally think it should be five meese.
After Jackson Hole, I headed towards Grand Targhee Ski Resort, which is where the Adventure Van Expo was being held. On the way there, I experienced one of my most challenging climbs in my Winnebago Travado, the Teton Pass. So this is definitely the most challenging climb I've done. Um, most of this pass, I've had my gas pedal to the floor and I haven't been able to go over 40 miles an hour. So luckily everyone in front of me is having the same issue. There's a lot of vans and RVs on here. So I'm just coming over the top of it now. Um, so I'm sure my, my engine is happy, but people always ask me about the performance of the Ram Pro Master. And so I figured I would share that with you. After making it through the pass, I was only a few miles from the Adventure Van Expo campsite, but I had a few hours to spare, so I pulled off at a scenic spot and got my first glimpse of Grand Teton. Alright, so I'm a little early to the Adventure Van Rally before I can get in with my ticket to go park at my campsite, but there's this pull-off spot and for the first time, I'm going to get to see one of the number one places on my bucket list and that's Grand Teton. So it's really sunny. Hopefully you can see it through the GoPro, but it's right back here. It's pretty awesome. The Tetons have been on my bucket list for a long time. And sometimes when you hype something up in your mind, it doesn't live up to expectations in reality, but the Tetons certainly did. It's a gorgeous place. So after about an hour of enjoying the view, I headed down to get my camp spot. There were supposed to be two campsites, one for people who have revels, so the revel people could all be around each other, and then one for just people attending the Adventure Van Expo that didn't have revels. Well, they ended up putting all of us together, which was actually kind of cool, and I was kind of proud of the Travato turnout. There was actually seven of us there which was pretty awesome. I grabbed my parking spot and then I went out to check out the other Travados and Revels and other types of vans that were already parked in my area. So this is a Revel rally, but we've got a lot of Travados here. But uh, I'm gonna go check out some of the Revels here real quick. Let me get out of the little Travado spot. We're all kind of joined up here. You might recognize some of these rigs right there. Overland Pirate van. Uh, on Instagram. He used to be Black Pearl Travado. You've probably seen him in some other YouTube videos. But uh, that's his van right there. The Revel is just a really cool and hip vehicle that Winnebago produces. It's their most sporty Class B. And just like any other Mercedes chassis built Class B, there are tons and tons of aftermarket mods you can get for these vehicles. And that's what this Adventure Van Expo is kind of built around, um, mods to the Mercedes chassis. So there wasn't that much available for my rig on the Ram Promaster chassis at this Adventure Van uh, rally, but it was still cool to see these Revels all tricked out, and it kind of gave me some ideas of things that I might want to do to my Ram Promaster in the future. While there wasn't much for the Promaster chassis here at the Adventure Van Rally, I got to meet some really amazing people and hang out with them, chat about Travados, chat about Revels. It was pretty awesome. Two of the Travado owners, Vicky and Noel, took me on a mountain bike ride through beautiful scenery and they thoroughly kicked my butt. So thank you, Vicky and Noel, for that ride. Crushing it! <laughs> and finally, I got to meet the Russos, which was really cool. I've been following them for a long time, so it was great to meet them in person.